On software process models, the waterfall model is probably the most well-known and sort of a classical example of uh, different software process models. The waterfall model is also very misunderstood. It's actually uh, originally designed as a sort of an iterative or back-and-forth process model and it's not actually even that traditional when compared more agile approaches or like uh, models that we would say that are agile or more modern. The first idea of what a wall model and the first iterative models were actually almost at the same time in around 60s when the waterfall model was considered to be sort of a simplified version which is good for teaching the thinking methods or the approaches in the software development. So that's why it's also a good model to start uh, discussing uh, software processes in general. The idea of waterfall model is really simplistic. We have a set number of phases. Usually it's something like five or six or seven and the idea is that we start from the first phase when we are done with that, go to second, done with that, the third, fourth, fifth, and so on. Usually, the uh, waterfall phases are requirements gathering and specification, uh, where we collect the requirements uh, from customers, for people who have ordered the software, or specialists who are very good at telling what sort of problems we would expect with the selected platform or with the concept. The second phase is usually system design where the system's architecture and the technical uh, definitions are made and it's followed by system construction, programming work, development and uh, uh, getting all the software components done and uh, integrated with the hardware. The next phase, testing, verification, validation, is more or less the idea that we uh, get rid of the bugs and problems which exist in the system after the construction and after we have done that we go into operation and maintenance by launching the software or selling it to customers or delivering it to uh, the party that paid the development. Overall the idea is really nice. Uh, we have to do requirements analysis, collect ideas, and make specifications before we can design anything. Uh, we have to design something before we can construct something, and we have to construct something before we can test it. And surely, since uh, every problem found during the development work at the first phases here, uh, fixing problems is much more cheaper than doing it during the operation. We have to do testing before we can go into maintenance and operations. So overall the idea is very simplistic and very straightforward. It actually even allows us to go backwards, back up to the waterfall. If, for example, during system construction we have a major obstacle, we can go back to system design, make some changes to design, and go back to construction. Basically, this is how waterfall approach works. However, uh, however well, obviously there's some uh, uh, objectives in waterfall approach which may not be completely suitable for development. For example, the idea, that, the idea that the phases do not overlap, the pure water, waterfall, is something that's really, really optimistic. Also that we have phases which deliver documents or milestones. Uh, for example, here we might have systems ar system architecture, here completed the requirements specification, here completed uh, system ready for testing, here system ready for delivery, and here system ready for well maintenance or dropping maintenance after extended period of time. So at each of these milestones we do review 
and document things and go to next phase. And we use feedback loops if we have to go back. But the going back is something that waterfall approach usually says that it's not a very good idea. So, like I said, the water wall model is actually uh, misunderstood. It's not supposed to be simple straightforward pipeline, although it's easily uh, understood as such, but there, there are other problems in the model which are very unfortunate. We know that the waterfall functions, it's simple, it's powerful, it doesn't require that much administration, and yet it introduces many challenges. For example, there's no way we can collect all the requirements when starting a project. The platforms will change, people forget things, lie if they are uncertain about something, and the customers may change ideas, and even our competitor, competition may launch a product that's too similar to ours. In the games industry, that's a real, real problem. If the game is too similar to something that already exists, the existing product eats your customer base. Also, one problem with this design is that it expects that the problems and bugs are actually easy to locate and fix on the final product. Since it expects that people are never wrong, we know the platform and we know that the platform won't change, the product is always correctly designed and built, although it has some problems which could be fixed in the testing phase, but obviously this is not true. If the platform changes, or sometimes we may build a product which fully achieves all the requirements, but actually has missed something that the customer would have needed, or uh, for some inherent flaw, actually requires extensive rebuilding and redesign work. But these things are addressed in the Agile approaches, and like I said, the waterfall is really good, it's really simple, it has the basics, and it's a good starting point, but probably something that has real trouble uh, surviving in the real industry and real world.